One of the most exciting stories that I've heard is the uh, story of Michael. He called us while he was in the hospital diagnosed with the coronavirus. That's Jonathan Edwards. He is the manager of the 24-7 prayer line that the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association set up in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, the gentleman he's talking about, and we'll call him Michael, is one of the people who've called the prayer line. He's a veteran, and so he has seen some things in war that he thought that Jesus would never be able to forgive him for. You're going to hear the rest of Michael's story, as well as the stories of other people who have called our 24-7 prayer line, and will be changing their names in order to protect their privacy. This is GPS, God, People, Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. I'm Jim Kirkland. My co-host, Phil Fleischman, is off this week. A lot of people have been calling the 24-7 prayer line, and we'll learn just how many in a moment. Many of them found out about the prayer line through a TV spot featuring Franklin Graham. And we're going to hear from Franklin a little later in this episode. You may not know what the future holds. There's so much uncertainty in the world today, but I do know who holds that future, and that's God. Would you like to trust your future to God? We can tell you more about how to do that at this website. It's findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. Or you can call the 24-7 prayer line, available anytime, 1-888-388-2683. GPS. God. People. Stories. Something really significant happened with the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association on March 17th, and it had nothing to do with celebrating St. Patrick's Day. It had something to do to meet a need that was going to be growing in scope uh, in the weeks ahead. And that is the fear, the worry, the concern, and the questions that came about through the COVID-19 crisis. And to meet those needs, the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association took an initiative, and that's the 24-7 prayer line. And we have Jonathan Edwards as our guest on this episode of GPS to share just a small glimpse, the tip of the proverbial iceberg, right. in terms of how God has worked through this line. So we're very grateful to have you uh, with us, Jonathan. Uh, we do many things, but we all have one title. Yes. What is your title? <laughs> so my title here at the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association for the past uh, several weeks has been the manager of the 24-7 prayer line. It is not hyperbole to say that you have had a very unique perch <laughs> to see God at work firsthand. Uh, let's start with, with some of the big digits. Right. What's the call volume been like? And break that down in terms of folks that have been prayed with and, and folks that have accepted Jesus Christ for the first time. So we really set this prayer line up and really began at the urging of Franklin, at Franklin's vision, to begin this 24-7 prayer line on March 17th. And since then, we have seen, uh, had over 100,000 calls come in, 100,000 spiritual conversations. Uh, we are right now at right about 6,000 decisions for Christ uh, in that 10-week span. Uh, with, again, a lot of those being first-time salvations, uh, about three over almost 4,000 of those being first-time salvations. And so we've seen a lot of ministry happen in a short amount of time. And that 100,000 call volume, that's something that uh, we were not expecting. We were not uh, in many ways prepared for. Uh, but I think what we've seen over the past 10 weeks is that uh, God uses us when we're unprepared, he equips. when he equips us when we're unprepared and when we're uncertain. And that's been really exciting. Wow. The uh, vast majority of the calls, I assume, uh, were um, triggered 
Mm-hmm. I would say the Holy Spirit used yes. the uh, announcements with Franklin that were used on television yes. and on radio. Yes. So share with us in terms of what, what, what was the fuel that began all of this on March 17th? So, so it's, we almost have two beginnings for the prayer line because you just mentioned the um, ads is maybe not the right word, but uh, proclamation, the, the gospel sharing that Franklin did on TV and radio. So initially when we began to hear about what was happening with the coronavirus and when we began to hear about states shutting down, and when we began to hear about people being confined to their homes, uh, we, uh, we heard from our leadership and our leadership came to us and said, look, we need to provide people someone to pray with. We've got a lot of fear. We've got a lot of uncertainty. We've got a lot of people who are unsure. So on March 17th, we really began officially this prayer line where someone could call in 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Now, uh, as we continued on, we started that and it worked well for about a week. We saw decent call volume come in. And then the week after that, Uh, is when Franklin, again, through his vision, and again, through a lot of support of a lot of our donors, uh, several donors, we were able to begin airing these uh, messages of hope around the nation on TV ads and in radio. And even uh, it's it's gone to places where we even have it on. uh, People have asked if they can put it on a billboard, this phone number. People have asked if they can put it in their church bulletins. So it's really taken on a life of its own. But on uh, the week after the prayer line started is when those ads began. And it's a very simple, uh, very powerful presentation of the gospel where Franklin Graham gets on and for 60 seconds shares the gospel, prays with somebody and invites them to call us for continued prayer and continued to discuss about what a relationship with Jesus Christ means. To be ready and to be available on the other side of that coin, you've got to have a lot of volunteers. You do. And we, we have had over, we've been blessed with over 1,300 volunteers. Where did these great folks come from? How, how did, did they end up in a chair as a volunteer being used of God on this prayer line? Well, let me tell you, first of all, uh, we've done a lot of work, but without God's provision, we would have not had the people. It's very much like the Bible says, the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. So we started out initially, we have a, a dedicated call center here at the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association we call Christian Response. And so we initially started there and said, hey, can you guys take some calls? And then all of a sudden the needs started growing exponentially. And we had to figure out what we were going to do very quickly. And so we reached out and found volunteers and and sent out a call to say, we need help. Uh, We need people who are um, willing to to come in, to, to go online and be trained, and then be ready to take calls. And to date, we've had over 1,300 volunteers who have responded to that call, and many of them have been on hours at a time taking these calls. Share one of those stories that started out in an unexpected way, but ended up being an incredible eternal gain for the person that was uh, on the other end of the line. We had a gentleman who called us, and he wanted to remain anonymous at first uh, and, and wasn't really talkative, but uh, he was uh, called us and was incredibly sad, Jim. He uh, is about 34 years old, and he had just got laid off of work due to the national lockdown. Uh, he was alone. He's lost both his parents, so he's an orphan and has no siblings, um, and it's just incredibly lonely. And he had received Jesus Christ into his life uh, after his parents passed, so he knew the Lord but he's alone and he's just lonely. And so he saw that ad and was able to call in and be ministered and prayed to with somebody. And that's a, you know, that's a type of call that we weren't aware of or that we weren't sure was going to happen because it's just someone who's struggling with loneliness. It's not a needed assurance. It's not a, not a big earth shaking call, but that's what we're here for is to be available. And one of the things I've seen in the ministry that we do here is that the ministry of presence can be done through the ministry of voice. And we've been so excited to see uh, folks like this this young man call in and just be comforted by someone, just be assured of their um, relationship with Jesus, and also be assured that um, that that they're not alone in this life. It's important to underscore there, I think, Jonathan, that uh, and for someone listening right now, if they simply want to pray with somebody, yes, to deal with. They may know Christ as their Savior. Praise God for that. Yes. But if they want prayer for a worry, anxiety, nervousness, 
uh, frustration, right. loneliness, fill in the blank. You guys are there for them. We are there, and we are here 24-7. And in fact, if you don't mind, Jim, I'd like to give out, out the number so our listeners can hear that as well. If you are interested and you want someone to talk to, we are standing by even right now. And you can call us at 888-388-2683. Again, 888 888- 388-2683. And we're here to talk with you. We're here to pray with you. We're here to encourage you, to point you back to Scripture. And you might be feeling alone right now, but I guarantee you, and I promise you, you are not. And we want to talk with you. So feel free to give us a call. Some people called for that prayer, yeah. for that reassurance, mm-hmm. to call to know more about Jesus. Mm-hmm. Some people called to give you a piece of their mind. <laughs> they did. We get people who are very supportive of the prayer line and, and people who are upset and people who are angry. And as you mentioned, Alex is one of those gentlemen. Immediately, as soon as he called in, he began to hurl insults. He began to, sh- to share profanity. He saw, he heard the gospel and he heard the presentation from Franklin. He said, ah, I'm not about that. I'm going to tell him exactly, exactly what I think about that and uh, started out with some profanity. One of the neat things is, is that the Holy Spirit equipped our, our volunteer in that moment and they remained calm. And they remained focused because that's what we talked about a lot is that as someone calls in and, sh- and, and curses at you and calls you names, says mean, says awful things about the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, you've got to remember that our identity is rooted in Christ. And so this volunteer remembered that and just began asking questions and engaging gently and lovingly with him. And as a result, um, this gentleman began to share about his life. Uh, he's been in and out of prison and he's an alcoholic and an addict. And he's 71 years old. And as they began to continue to talk, as our volunteer continued to talk with Alex, um, he explained the need for Jesus and that it was never too late uh, to make a decision. So again, he shared the steps to peace with Jesus Christ uh, with Alex. And uh, he began crying, uh, the Alex did. And as he's crying, he prayed to accept Jesus Christ. And afterward, once, once that prayer was done, um, in that moment, he was able to shift that conversation. And at the end of the call, uh, Alex was able to laugh, talking about how when he saw the ad on TV, his only objective was to call and cuss out whoever, uh, whoever picked up the phone. He said, now look what has happened. Who would have thought? And that is, that's the testimony uh, of what God can do. Uh, if we're available if we're ready and if we are rooted in his word, uh, we can do very powerful ministry no matter who we are. It struck me, Jonathan, many of the callers, maybe confusion's the not the right word, mm-hmm. but whether it was the worry and the anxiety and the concern coupled with, I know who God is. Right. I know who Jesus is. <laughs> yes. But I am not real sure how, why he can help me with that. They were looking at all spiritual matters almost through a haze. Yes, absolutely. And they needed that other person on the call. Absolutely. And and one of the, the folks who called in, Ashlyn, uh, was one of these individuals. And she called in and... Uh, she knew who Jesus was and she knew about Jesus kind of and knew about God and considered her, herself religious. But the message that Franklin presented very clearly um, and very powerfully really resonated with her. And so she called in and she says, I, I've, I am religious, I've been religious, but I've realized that I need Jesus. And so our volunteer was able to, with Ashen, walk through these steps to peace with God. Again, how um, Christ came to this earth, how he died, how he rose again for her, and asked her if she was interested in uh, receiving receiving Jesus as her Lord and Savior. And she prayed right then and there. Again, she had been in a religious circles all her life, and but she had never really taken that step because she really, as you mentioned, she really didn't know who Jesus was. And Alpha Arante was able to share that with her and, and, and lead her to that personal relationship. And that relationship can be, begin at any time. And one of the most awe-striking aspects of our Savior's acceptance of us when we repent of our sins, when we surrender and call upon Him, is that that can happen with the same eternal life impact uh, in the life of an elementary school kid Yes, as it can with, let's say, for instance, an 87-year-old woman. Adana is a lady who called in and she is afraid 
and alone. Uh, and she is, as you mentioned, she is 87 years old. Her daughter lives 20 miles away, but she can't see her because of this social distancing. And she called us right in the middle of the pandemic and just said, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. And she says she even prays constantly. Um, and she wakes up every single morning and, and she wants to pray and continually seek the Lord. But then she asked us, uh, she, we asked her a question. Our volunteer asked a question that really kind of focused her in. Uh, the volunteer asked, well, if you died tonight, do you know where you would go? Do you know where your eternal place? And she said, I don't know how to answer that question. So even Jim, even as she has been praying, even as she's been seeking the Lord during this loneliness, she didn't know the answer to that. And so um, she said she hopes she goes to God. And our volunteer, again, very simply and and was available, was listening to what the Lord was telling him, asked a simple question, would you like to be sure? And and Donna said, I, I don't know if I can be sure. And this volunteer said, yes, you can. And then shared how to come to faith in Jesus Christ, shared the steps to peace with God, as we call them, and asked if she would like to invite it to Jesus into her heart. And she said, yes. And at this, at this, this 87-year-old woman who called us alone, who called us, oh, she was so alone, she was scared, she was uncertain. She ended this call so happy and so filled with joy, knowing that she's never going to be alone again. And again, doesn't matter whether you're 10 years old, doesn't matter whether you're 87, anyone can experience this uh, feeling of, of Jesus in their heart, this uh, lack of loneliness, I guess you can say. Um, and again, we're happy to play a small part in leading people to that rebirth and new life in Jesus Christ at any age. At any age. Yeah. We all have uh, a particular evangelistic tool uh, probably on us right now, <laughs> and that's the smartphone. One of the things that makes this an incredible evangelistic tool, Jonathan, is the fact that um, we all now have speaker phones. Yes, absolutely. And a caller who we'll call Jose our volunteer, when they got this call, was not excited about the call because it showed up, the ID on their phone showed up as a liquor store. And so they're thinking it was going to be one of these calls where they're they're thinking, oh no, this is someone who's going to be calling me and they're going to share a piece of their mind. But the caller was faithful. The volunteer was faithful and answered the phone anyways. And they were completely surprised to learn that Jose was in completely sincere and he had been called in after seeing Franklin Graham several times, not the first time, not the second time, not even the third time maybe, but after seeing him several times. And he asked for prayer uh, because he was overwhelmed with all the bad news he's hearing about the coronavirus. And uh, he, the volunteer connected with him, identified, and asked if he'd like to hear some good news for a change. And so what Jose did in the middle of a liquor store is he put that put us on speaker, and the gospel was shared. This volunteer shared the gospel with everyone listening. And Jose um, put him on speaker so that everyone in the store could hear, so that his father-in-law could hear as well. And at that moment, Jose prayed out loud in this liquor store to receive Jesus. And you could hear the others in the background getting excited and getting um, hearing this good news for the first time. And it was just an incredible moment of God's faithfulness. And again, how, how easy it is to press that speakerphone button so everyone can hear. It's amazing to think that Jose simultaneously accepted the gospel of Jesus Christ and acted out the Great Commission. Absolutely. That's 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 putting your money where your mouth is pretty quick. Amen. <laughs> you know, thinking about COVID-19, what are some of the um, chief concerns that people have expressed that, that, that they were feeling deep enough to the point they said, I, I got to talk to somebody? Mm. Well, you know what's been interesting, Jim, is that as we've been sharing these ads, as Franklin has been on national TV, he's he's been on these national cable channels uh, who are sharing the news. And the news over the past 10 weeks has pretty much not been good. And so we have seen everything from uh, people calling in and some of them are scared because maybe they have pre-existing conditions and they, they're they scared about getting the coronavirus. Uh, we've had atheists, those who don't believe in the Lord at all, who are just feeling so overwhelmed that they don't know where to turn. And so they just need someone to call and pray with. One of the most exciting stories that I've heard uh, is the uh, story of Michael um, who called in and he called us 
Jim, while he was in the hospital, diagnosed with the coronavirus. Really? So he was in his bed, and he had seen Franklin uh, several days on TV. Again, this is the interesting thing. He didn't call us on that first one. You know, that seed was planted on the the first time that ad aired. But after several times, he finally uh, humbled himself enough and thought, I really need this help. I'm getting physical help, but I really need spiritual help. That he finally called us and he said, um, I need Jesus. He has been a, he's a veteran. And so he has seen some things in war that he thought that Jesus would never be able to forgive him for. Uh, but as he's sitting there in that hospital bed, diagnosed with the coronavirus, fighting for his physical life, our volunteer was able to pray with him, reassure him that no matter what sins he's committed, no matter what things he's seen, that Jesus' love, Jesus' grace covers all that. And he was able to not only find uh, physical health in the hospital, but find a new spiritual health through Jesus Christ. Tell us another story. I mean, these are just, you know, all glory to God. These these are incredible. You got another? I've got plenty, but let me give you this one. This is one of my favorites. One of our volunteers received a call from a prison, and from a women's prison, and it was one of those... Um, like a payphone like a payphone like a collect call so there was a limited time frame and i we don't know how they got the number we don't know if they saw franklin or if someone passed them the number but they were in a three uh female inmates in a in a jail and all three of them prayed to receive jesus christ on the phone in this limited amount of time probably probably about 10 minutes but one after the other they called and they knew that they needed something and they knew that they needed jesus and so our volunteer was able to um, you know, minister to a place that no one right now is probably allowed to go because of the coronavirus, uh, they were able to all call in and receive Jesus Christ through this phone call. And just the, the impact of seeing that of three women who call collect to a toll-free number, 888-388-2683. And no matter what they've done beforehand, their lives have been changed uh, through Jesus Christ. You know, this podcast is GPS, God people stories. Yes. The Lord has worked mightily in this process. We've seen his hand. We've seen how he works through people, Mm -hmm. people who love other people. Yes. Are willing. Yes. Are available Mm -hmm. and are teachable. Yes. And then we have heard stories Mm. of how God has literally carried out his word. Yes his promises Mm -hmm. and his faithfulness in what he's done. And we're basking in those stories and are grateful that you uh, took time to share those with us today. Well, I'm just grateful to be here. Even though those three women Jonathan Edwards just told us about were in jail, they weren't behind bars any longer spiritually after they surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ. They're no longer chained to the guilt of their sins. And you can experience that same freedom right now. You can experience the hope and peace that only Jesus Christ can offer. We can tell you more online or when you call the 24-7 prayer line. The website, findpeacewithgod.net. The number, 888-388-2683. That's 888-388-2683. That prayer line has proven to be especially important now that some of our ministry's other outreaches have been put on hold because of COVID-19. You'll learn here in just a moment how it's proven to be important when Jonathan Edwards explains. You're listening to GPS God, People, Stories, a podcast production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. You may not know what the future holds. There's so much uncertainty in the world today, but I do know who holds that future, and that's God. Franklin Graham. He secured my future by sending his son, Jesus Christ, from heaven to this earth to take my sins and your sins to the cross. He died, shed his blood, he was buried, and God raised his son to life. He's alive and he's willing to forgive you of your sins 
if you'll just ask him. If you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior, you can do that right now and be sure that your future is secure in his hands. Just pray this prayer. God, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I believe Jesus Christ is your son, and I want to trust him as my Savior, and I'm willing to follow him as my Lord from this day forward forever. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. What you just heard is from a TV spot Franklin Graham recorded to let people know about the 24-7 prayer line that we have been talking about in this episode of GPS. It was set up by the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association in response to the coronavirus crisis. Our guest, Jonathan Edwards, says the prayer line has been an important tool while regular outreaches are on hold because of the global pandemic. One of the challenges we've had as a ministry, as the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, is that over the past 10 weeks, we can't go into a stadium and present the gospel with everyone crowded in and have a response. But what he has seen and what he's even talked to us about is that this is like a phone crusade where he has been able to go on TV and share the gospel very clearly, very succinctly, and then give that call. And in that call, you just say, call 888 388-2683. And some of the numbers we've seen from that, some of the response we've seen, he said it's like having, during a shutdown, it's like having a couple of different crusades over a 10-week period. And so the response he has given is that he has been thrilled and so excited to see uh, the responses that have come through. I want to thank Jonathan Edwards for sitting down and talking with me about how God's using our 24-7 prayer line to minister to hurting people wherever they are, whatever time of day. And if we can minister to you, we are here for you. Call us at 888-388-2683. I also want to thank you for giving of your time to join us for this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. Good news.